Hi guys, so last time we spoke about past Sikiam and NTSC standards, some fun facts and origins. What I didn't expect was to get almost 200 comments on this video. So thanks everyone. Most comments were positive, fun or informative. Only one guy thought I was spreading European lies. I've collected the most important comments and double checked some of what was said to create this video. There are some technical things and even some geopolitics, so it's a bit mind-blowing. So let's jump into more fun facts on TV standards. First, let's clarify that the interlaced fields of the analog signal make one picture, but are in fact related to two different pictures taken 16 or 20 milliseconds apart. You can see that easily while editing as both fields never coincide perfectly showing the delay between the two fields. Also, I forgot to mention that CCAM means Sequentiel de couleur en mémoire, which predates PAL. It was developed since 1956 by a team led by Henri de France and initially had 819 lines. It's only after Europe set the line count to 625 lines that France changed its format. We also mentioned that NTC is sometimes jokingly called never twice same color. PAL has its own lot of funny denominations, like perfect at last, people always lavender for weak signal areas, picture always lousy, pay another license, or even PAL for active line, which refers to a dog food advertisement. From the tip of his tongue to the tip of his tail, PAL with Marabone for active life. A backronym of CCAM was engineered contrary to the American method. Regarding the image frequencies following electricity grid, TV systems in those days needed a synchronization pulse for the internal clock. Otherwise, the picture would eventually drift apart. The obvious synchro system used the main frequency of the electricity grid, which led to the 60 Hz for US and 50 Hz for Europe. Modern TVs can usually use different frequencies, but in the 50s, 60s, that was not the case and not easy to solve. When color was introduced in different countries, it was done in a backwards compatible way. In theory, you can combine any of the three color standards with any of the frame rate and line count systems. So, in order to state a country's analog television standard, you have to state the color system with the frame rate and the line system. For example, USA was NTSC M, France was CCAM L, most of Western Europe was PAL BG, UK was PAL I, much of the Eastern Bloc was CCAM DK. For compatibility, it's more important that the capital letter standard is identical, because then you can at least watch a broadcast in black and white. A matching color standard, but different capital letters, is of no use. For example, you could watch an NTSC M broadcast from the US with a Brazilian PAL M television in black and white. But you could not watch a French CCAM L broadcast with a Eastern European CCAM DK television. People usually talk about NTSC when they mean NTSC M or PAL when talking about PAL BG. Technically, the only difference between PAL and CCAM is how the color information is encoded. By the way, did you know that every CCAM TV station in the world actually used PAL equipment in their control rooms and studios? It wasn't until the final signal reached the transmitter site that they re-encoded the signal from PAL to CCAM. Basically, mixing two CCAM signals doesn't provide a valid CCAM signal at the end, making it impossible to edit CCAM without first transferring it into a PAL system for editing. This is due to the nature of the CCAM sequential color encoding system. A good time to remind you to like and subscribe as a free non-intrusive viewer tax. To better understand what happens on a technical level, here is a bit more explanation. The composite video signal for NTC and PAL contains the luminance Y as a base signal, which is a low frequency signal. And the chrominance C is modulated on top of it. Modulation is basically adding a high frequency signal to a low frequency base to provide another set of information within the same transmission. So let's break this down. First, we have the luminance. The luminance is the part of the signal that provides the grayscale or black and white part of the image. It is not modulated and can be represented by the formula on screen. The factoring numbers before the R, G and B are coming from the proportion to which each color channel the human eye is sensitive to and can vary depending on the standard used. It only provides the perceived brightness, so even if there's RGB in the formula for red, green and blue, it doesn't provide the color information. This part of the signal represented by the letter Y is called LUMA, keep that in mind. 
Then on top, we have the modulated chrominance. Chrominance is the signal used in video systems to convey the color information, also called chroma. It is usually represented as two color difference components. U, which is B minus Y, so blue minus luma, and V, which is R minus Y, or red minus luma. This is where the YUV graph comes from. Y for luma, UV for chroma. Then comes the color spaces like BT Rec 709. The green channel is not directly encoded as a different signal because the green component is already implicit in the overall LUMA signal, which is a weighted sum of the three primary colors, red, green, and blue, as per the formula we seen just before. Also, both NTC and PAL uses QAM modulation for colors, whereas CCAM uses FM modulation. QAM means quadrature amplitude modulation. It modulates both the amplitude and phase of the color signal. This allows for efficient transmission of the color signal over the same bandwidth used for the luminance, aka the black and white signal. PAL improves upon NTC by alternating the phase of the color signal to reduce color distortion. The bandwidth of each signal is called a carrier and the chrominance carrier frequency typically ranges from 3.58 MHz for NTSC and PAL to 4.25 MHz for CCAM. CCAM uses frequency modulation known as FM for encoding the chrominance signal. The color information is modulated by varying the frequency rather than the amplitude or phase. The frequency of the FM signal is different for each color, which helps minimize the interference between color channels. The sequential transmission of color is the key to understand how CCAM works. On a given line of video, one of the color difference, either R minus Y or B minus Y, is modulated onto the carrier using FM. On the next line, the other color difference signal, either B minus Y or R minus Y, is transmitted. This means that each line of video carries only one of the two different color signals. And over two lines, the full color information is available. The alternation of R minus Y and B minus Y occurs within the same frame, just spread across consecutive lines. So the frame is made up of a sequence of lines with color information transmitted in pairs of lines. Mesecam, however, refers to the method of recording CCAM colors onto VHS or Betamax. VHS tapes sold in Europe were labeled PAL CCAM. However, some early CCAM recorders were recording in PAL after transcoding the signal from CCAM to PAL. Then during playback, the signal was again converted from PAL to CCAM, making it look like it's recorded in CCAM without it being the case. There was also the MAX system. It means multiplexed analog components. It was an attempt to provide higher quality analog video transmission and was an early precursor of some of the digital video standards we use today like MPEG H.264 and H.265. Developed in the late 1980s and early 90s as an improvement to existing analog television systems, it was meant to enhance video quality by increasing resolution, improving color reproduction and providing a better signal-to-noise ratio for less interference and distortion. Mac attempted to use techniques similar to digital compression on an analog signal to achieve higher efficiency allowing for the transmission of more data without occupying more bandwidth. One of the goals was to enable the transmission of high-quality video, capable of full-screen viewing and even 3D video, which at the time was considered a significant breakthrough. The Mac system required a new infrastructure and expensive hardware upgrades for consumers. Mac was only adopted by a few countries, like the UK and France, and broadcasts were limited. The system never saw universal deployment and the incompatibility with existing broadcast infrastructure was a huge barrier. Ultimately, it failed to gain widespread adoption and its goal of improving analog television signals were eventually surpassed by digital video technologies. Regarding France adopting CCAM when the rest of Europe settled on PAL, the reason is rather petty for France. PAL was developed in West Germany and the French were not going along with German so well. As for the Soviets, they were working on the color system of their own, but it was laced with many setbacks, thus deciding to settle for CCAM. To prevent the Soviet citizens from watching Western television, they avoided using the PAL system. When the Berlin Wall fell and USSR dissolved, first thing done in former Warsaw Pact countries was to switch from CCAM to PAL. For example, in Latvia, CCAM was really unstable. Bad video signal made the system go black and white, and multi-standard VCRs couldn't decide and randomly switched between MESECAM and PAL. 
audio was encoded differently as well. Czechoslovakia CCAM TVs could decode Austrian PAL broadcast, but without color and sound. Someone also mentioned that Poland switched to PAL in 1995, and while ripping all VHS tapes in black and white, he did not realize that he had to switch the standard to CCAM in the configuration of the capture card. Argentina faced an initial challenge when the first televisions were imported from the US and had to be converted to 220 volts and 50 hertz. When it came time to choose a color TV system, PAL was preferred like in Brazil because NTSC experienced color issues over long distances and geographic fluctuations. Added to that, since the country has relied on US black and white system, it was important to ensure compatibility with existing televisions for continued reception of broadcast. The color carrier bandwidth in NTC was 3.58 MHz per channel. And with this bandwidth, Argentina was able to adapt the PAL system under the PAL and standard. This adaptation maintained full resolution, so 625 lines in Argentina versus 525 in Brazil's PAL-M system. Later in the 1990s, Argentina adopted the BTSC standard for stereo sound in PAL-M broadcast, further enhancing the audiovisual experience. That said, in the beginning of the 2000s, the PAL-M was not a big issue anymore, since every television in Brazil was triple mode, supporting PAL-M, PAL-N and NTSC. A part of PAL and CCAM was the vertical blanking interval. It's a portion of the video signal that occurs when the electron beam in the CRT television returns to the top of the screen to begin drawing the next frame. Since this period is not used to display visual content, it provided an opportunity to transmit additional data, such as teletext. I could do an entire video on teletext, which was full of information with magazines, news, flight times and delays, trading charts and so on. Teletext can be considered as a precursor to the internet, particularly in terms of providing on-demand text-based information to users on screen. While it lacked the interactivity and vast scale of the modern internet, it introduced several concepts that became foundational for online information access. Also, the sampling rates of digital audio, particularly the 44.1 kHz used in CDs, were influenced by television standards due to the existing infrastructure and technology available at the time. In the late 1970s, early 80s, when CD format was being developed by Sony and Philips, they needed to choose a sampling rate that balanced audio quality and compatibility with existing video recording and processing equipment. Since early digital audio was often stored on video tape recorders, aka VTRs, the chosen sample rate had to align with TV broadcast standards. Then came all the ISDB and ATSC standards, but it's an entire other rabbit hole I won't cover in this video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video on it. Like and subscribe, see you in the next one, peace.